Hi, Chris. You know, you've crossed my mind many, many times whenever I read of your updates in the past about in Instagram about your health um, and the status of your health. And, and so many times I've been wanting to share with you my book, The Heart of Healing, and, and some of the talks that I've done. I've asked my wife, Miriam, to find a way to get a copy of my book to you because um, the subject of the book is my late wife, Ting Ting, and how she also struggled and was victorious at one point with SLE, an autoimmune illness similar to yours. I know that in your last update, you said that you have three out of the five markers and that you suspect that maybe the lupus SLE is just sleeping. But I just want to encourage you, um, whatever the final diagnosis is, that you can also have a miraculous healing like my first wife did. She did have a miraculous healing in the year 2000 that extended her life for another 12 full years. So I've been thinking that perhaps sending you this open uh, video or this vlog would be a better way to reach you uh, with this message of hope and healing. So for now, Chris, please know that Miriam and I are praying for you and your healing. And in fact, I'd like to pray for you right now, if that's okay. Father God, you are the creator of the universe and you created your child, Chris. We pray, Lord Father, and lift her up to you. We lift up her healing to you. We lift up her body to you and her health. I pray, Lord, for a miracle that she, as she surrenders her life to you, that you will surround her with small miracles leading up to a big miracle of healing as she surrenders her life to you. May her life be surrounded by miracles. Lord, we just pray that you will comfort her, that you will give wisdom to the doctors. I pray, Lord, that you will provide comfort and hope and peace to her heart. We thank you, Lord, for the miracles that will be coming. And we just praise you, Lord, in advance for doing such. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you're watching this and your name is that Chris Aquino, I invite you to pray, to pray for her as well and continue praying for her healing. Thank you. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside quiet and still waters. He restores or he refreshes my soul and leads me to paths of righteousness for his namesake. And though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear, I shall fear no evil for you, my God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare for me a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Truly, goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, when I was writing and doing research for my book, The Heart of Healing, I came across some very fascinating facts about the power of human hope. Dr. Harold Wolf, he's a doctor and researcher from Harvard University, he said, hope, faith, and a purpose in life is actually medicinal. Some of you may be aware that medical science proves how powerful hope is whenever there is a new drug or vaccine, and for that matter, that is launched. Pharmaceuticals today, they test their new drugs with the double-blind method. When they give the drugs to administering doctors, the doctors themselves do not know which is the true drug and which is the control drug. All new medicines must be tested that way for one simple reason, the power of human hope. They found out that it is the doctor's demeanor 
when he prescribes that medicine as the key factors, meaning it is the doctor's smile, his voice, his attitude. And by doing so, the doctor would unknowingly convey confidence and hope of the probability of getting well. Positive expectations and positive results is called the placebo effect. But the opposite is also true. Negative expectations equals also negative side effects. You know, those years when I was taking care of my first late wife, Ting Ting, who had systemic lupus. And it turns out that her mom, she thought she died of bone cancer. Ayun pala, it was also lupus. And she saw how her mother suffered when she was taking steroids. You know, Ting Ting associated steroids with all the pain that she saw her mother suffering. So when she was asked to take steroids, nako, ang dami na niyang takot, ang dami na niyang iniisip na ganito mangyayari sa akin. Placebo pala means to please. But nocebo in the Latin means I will harm. God has given us the most powerful computer computer in the universe. It is our necktop computer. This computer right here. It is so powerful we can program it. And according to science, even in the Bible, then whatever a man thinketh, he becomes. How do we apply the placebo and this nocebo effect in our lives? You know, if we have IQ and EQ or even SQ, meta spiritual quotient, I'd like for all of us to adopt a new Q today. It's called HQ. It is the hope quotient. The higher your HQ, the higher your likelihood of health and happiness. This 2022. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4, anyone who is among the living has hope. Habang may buhay, may pag-asa. I think there are three lessons that we can apply. First lesson I learned is to fix my eyes on the author of life. You know, during my crisis, the only way I could be filled with hope and not sink into depression was to fix my eyes on the Lord. Number two, if you want to be refreshed, refresh others first. If we refresh others, God refreshes us. Who can you refresh? I remember when Ting Ting was in the hospital, she would refresh people and the, the doctors and nurses by complimenting them. She would be the one asking them if they needed prayers. And I remember one day, one of the doctors came in, sabi ng asawa ko, Doc, do you know where you're going if you were to die tonight? The doctor said, I don't know. My motto kasi ng meeting team, my, my late wife was, life is short. Teach us, Lord, to number our days. So she made the most of her days even if she was in the hospital. She realized the hospital was her new mission field. She loved sharing the gospel. In her hospital bed while she was lying down, she started sharing the good news to him using one verse evangelism. You Romans chapter 6 verse 23. So she told the doctor, you know what doc, uh, the Bible says for the wages of sin is death. Nagkasala ka na ba? Of course. So doc, that means you are going to die. And not just a physical death, but the death that is mentioned here in the Bible is a spiritual death. Meaning you will be forever separated from God. You won't be in heaven, but you will be in hell. But doc, this is the good news. Eternal life, which is a gift of God. And this is important through Jesus Christ our Lord. And with that one verse, napaisip niya yung doktor. Suddenly, it seemed that he wasn't in a hurry anymore. He was just stuck by the bedside thinking about what she said. And my wife asked another question. Do you think about what happens to all those people after they die? Doc? The doctor said all the time, I see death in the hospital and the thought does pass and bothers me. Thinking says, you know what? He said in his word that God loved the world so much he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him will not have to die but have eternal life. And then she ask, Doc, would you like to have eternal life? And the doctor says, yes, I would like that. Okay, Doc, my husband, Ardy, will pray with you. Just follow him. So I pray with the doctor. Say, okay, Doc, just pray this prayer and say, Dear God, I am a sinner and I know that I cannot save myself. And I thank you for your gift of eternal life that you yourself have paid for on the cross. I believe in you and I thank you for this gift of eternal life. I invite you into my heart to make me the person I want to be and to live your purpose here on this earth with my remaining days in Jesus' name. So I open my eyes and then we pray that prayer and that our doctor has tears in his eyes. And I am hoping that everyone else had said the prayer. And I'm hoping that those of you who are here right now who have not yet said that prayer, I've also said that prayer as well. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, say that prayer. When I think about my late wife just worshiping God in heaven, worshiping Jesus, she loves singing praise to God. But I think to myself that I'm still alive because God has a purpose. And all of you who are here and you're still alive, you're still breathing, God has a purpose for your life. And you know what hope stands for? 
hope means helping other people every day. The third thing is now you can take care of yourself because you yourself have hope and you can now give it. You cannot give what you don't have. You might even the airlines when you ride and in the airplane, you, they say before you take care of your child, take care of yourself first, give yourself the oxygen, then give your child the oxygen. You must yourself be full of hope before you can give it to others. When you focus your eyes on the author of life, that's Jesus, you will have J. When you focus on others, that's O. And then focus and take care of yourself. That's why. And then you will have joy. God bless and remember that nothing is impossible with God. Father God, I lift you up, uh, Chris. Father God, I know uh, that you care for her and I can only imagine what she's experiencing right now, but I just pray, Lord God, that your hand will be upon her, that you will heal her completely, Lord God, that you will comfort her through the pain and even in the nights when she's alone in her hospital bed, Lord God, or in her bedroom, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, that you'll be the one to stand by her and comfort her with your gentle healing hand upon her, Lord God. I claim for complete healing from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. I just pray, Lord God, that her family, uh, especially her kids, Lord God, will be... Uh, will be strengthened as well. You will have a hand upon them, Lord, even while their mother is away for treatment, Lord God. And I just thank you, Lord God, because um, your promise is not that we'll have an easy life, but you will be with us, Lord God, and hold our hand through every situation. So I'm claiming victory in Jesus' name, name above all names. I'm claiming victory over this disease. Chris is experiencing right now, Lord God, and I claim for her complete healing in every aspect. Shalom, shalom for Chris. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Chris.